Please join me in welcoming our speaker for today, Miss Lisa Beroy. Hello. Oh, hi, Jane. Very nice to see you. It's good to see you too. Yes. Well, we had a really inspiring uh, session yesterday. I believe a lot of the mothers out there found it very helpful. Well, I so, it as well. I'm so grateful that you invited me. Wonderful. And now we're, we're privileged to actually see, I'm privileged actually, to see you face to face, right? So, yes, this is a pressure because, you know, Binibini Filipinas and you know, you're, you're not. No? Oh, you know, Binibini lang. <laughs> okay, so I guess um, uh, before we begin, is there anything you would like to maybe say hello to the mothers out there? Yes, um, uh, good morning to all the mothers out there, also the grandmothers and the mother figures of Imanta and also pretty much everyone on Facebook at large who is watching right now. It is a pleasure to be here and I'm really grateful that um, you gave me an opportunity to share my thoughts with you guys. Of course, it is our pleasure. Shout out, of course, to our engagement lead, uh, Jenny, uh, who made this happen. All right. Okay, so let's, uh, let me go ahead and start by asking. Tell us, who is Lisa? Wow. <laughs> First question. First question, Langan. Yeah, this is the first question out of 100. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, who am I? Um, basically, I'm a conservative woman who um, enjoys being in her soft feminine energy. Um, I thrive in supporting, encouraging, and nurturing those whom I love. And um, I like to provide a space for them where they can thrive and grow. Um, I love learning. And because of that, I like to surround myself with people who are smarter, stronger, better than I am. Because I believe that that's the environment where I get to grow most. Also, um, I have no qualms about getting my hands dirty. I'm willing to do hard work in order to achieve higher goals. Um, also, I find great fulfillment in being able to help others, whether it's by way of imparting whatever knowledge I have or maybe helping in practical ways. It gives me great joy because I, I believe it's a privilege for me to be able to make the world a better place than how I found it. And, um, you know, all of these are fluffy, soft things and all, but those who know me will also acknowledge that if necessary, I can also wake up with grizzly bear in me uh, because I love my kids dearly and I'll do anything to protect them. Of course, yes. Of course, while we're, we're mothers, loving and supportive as we are, yeah, mm -hmm. we're also expected to morph into dinosaurs every now and then. I, I know you're the yeah. same way as I am. That's right, yes. Okay, well, you know, coming from our... Remember there was a game we played uh, mm -hmm. yesterday there is a clip there of a mother and a child arguing. Yeah? Okay. So I, I wanted to ask you, what is the importance of the mother-child relationship? Oh, it's very important. I mean, from from womb to tomb, I'll say. Because some, mm -hmm. you know, I, I might be in the minority, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I think some people feel that parenting ends when the child becomes an adult. Mm -hmm. But um, in my mind and in my heart, I believe that once you're a parent, you're really there to support your child and to give advice. Really, from the very beginning, you teach them how to talk potty, and then you teach them how to speak and communicate, and then later on, you teach them about human interactions. But even as a child, you know, starts to make their way in the world, and they build their own career as adults, or even maybe even married adults, mm -hmm. it's still, I believe, uh, beneficial when the mother gets involved involved uh, in the, being nosy and taking over but but you know just for the it's beneficial when the mother is present to give advice because they come from a position of experience might maybe their own or perhaps something that they've observed um, from interacting with other people but you know that's that's useful advice that any child can use in order to help them navigate through life and through the many different systems of life so it's very important. And of course, I, I, I talk about the mom giving the child, but even children give to their parents. Yes. Um, my own children, they're, they're a source of joy and, and life and wisdom for me. No? Um, and, and even all the way till the end, because they become stronger and sometimes, you know, when the parents are elderly already, that's when they start to depend on their children in terms of physical things. 
did you experience challenges? Your children are how old? Are they? 14 or 22? 22. None have married? No, none yet. None, none yet. yet. It's going to be a while. <laughs> okay, okay. Did you experience any uh, challenges in you know, maintaining that relationship? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Very much so. Um, I think. Uh, I think everyone goes through it, especially when they when kids go through what they call the monster teenager oh, years. Yes. But even before that, and um, I think it's really just a matter of being able to be attuned to your child's needs and adjusting, right? Uh, because when a child is newborn, they're completely dependent on you, and you get to decide everything. And then when they form their own personalities, and sometimes clashes with their own, right. um, or or really, you know, they, they try to test your limits. That could really test you as well. So so yeah, certainly I've done that. Um, and then with some kids, it takes longer to get over it and to learn. Right. But with others, someone somehow. I don't know if you experience that, but there's some children that somehow you just understand each other. It's like right. me and the client yeah. just so solid. Not to say that you love the other less, but it's just easier. Okay. Well, what what tips can you give us for maintaining that good relationship between you and children? Okay, um, so just like yesterday, I mentioned that in terms of sleep, I'm not the authority, but this is something that I'm learning. Um, in terms of maintaining good relationships with the children. This is also something I'm learning. But um, I find that what's effective is when you try to go to where they are, instead of forcing them to do the things that I like. Say, for example, I like go oh, okay, I, I used to shoot hoops for my exercise. And you know, my kids are tall, my son is 6'1". He just doesn't like basketball. You know, everyone who sees him says, I am not mm, basketball right. guy, but it's just not something that he likes to do. So instead, I go to his uh, interests, which is music and art and dance. So um, in order for us to forge that connection, I think they have to see me um, take an interest in the things that matter to them. And then later on, Automatically, maybe without thinking, they also tend to become more open to my own suggestions. So yeah, go where they are. Maybe, um, as, as they would say, renew that sense of wonder. Be a child again. Yeah. You know, renew your, your finger in your child. You know, when we become parents, you know, it's easy because we have that authority over them. Mm -hmm. Then we want to instill that. Ito, this is what you need to be. Yeah. Right? Kunyari, matangkad. Dapat mag-basket. Diba? Very common kasi yun. But, but yeah. yes, you're right. Go to where uh, they're really comfortable in. But they love the whole kind of thing. So very helpful. Any other tips that you can um, think of that help you with your children? Okay. One thing that really helped me was when I started to study love languages. Oh. Yeah. Um, so if you're from, I think you're familiar with it, but Dr. Gary Chow oh. talks about mm -hmm. five different love languages, and they are over oh, for that physical touch, words of affirmation, gifts, acts of service, and I always forget the last time, time, time. Um, and so what I learned was sometimes we tend to give the love language that we prefer to receive. But if the person who is receiving your love or the person whom you're trying to show love towards does not speak that language, it's useless. It would be like me speaking to you in Russian. You know, I could say the sweetest, most loving thing to you in Russian. You wouldn't feel to it, right? Because you don't understand. Um, I've had to really study my children. Okay. I studied them in the sense that I watched what they were doing, but I also I cheated because I went online and had them take the test. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you, you guys can actually do that. Have your children take the uh, love five love languages five love language test. Yeah, just Google it by Dr. Gary Chapman. So so yeah, so what happened there was that, for example, uh, my one my favorite DJ. Um, because my personal love language is, uh, at the time anyway, was physical touch. And so I'd always hug him, hug him. But I noticed that he would pull away. And I thought that meant that he didn't love me. And of course, he took offense. And all the more, I'd move towards him. And all the more, he'd pull away. 
only after that, it occurred to me to have him take the test. And I found out that among the five love languages, physical touch was not just the lowest, but he scored zero in that. So to him, he, he doesn't didn't, understand it. Yeah, there's like it a, yeah, it meant nothing to it him. Meant nothing. I mean, of course, I carried him. And he, Open me hugs me and kisses me now. But the point is, I had to figure out what his love language was, which was words of affirmations. And that was a moment where and I was convicted because I realized that when I'd lecture my kids, I would tend to overemphasize my point. And to the point that um, it was, I'd speak this encouraging language to them, which is a major, major moment. Because if you speak a particular love language, any um, so-called withdrawal in that in your love life with using that currency that love language that's a major major thing so if dj for example he has love language is words of affirmation when i would say one discouraging thing to me it was just like one point but he received it as like a 10 point discouragement it was really a major withdrawal so you have to be aware of that and that helps once I was aware of it, I was uh, more conscious and careful. Still made mistakes, but you know, I'd apologize every time. And eventually, we found our our momentum. And then you did this for all of your children, for all the kids. Yeah, you don't get confused. Do they have different? Oh, I get confused. <laughs> Aren't you the one with the touch? No. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh, my kids are used to that. I mean. Not you know, they could they could use their names or their birthdays sometimes, but you know, yeah, even those details. So they're used to me. I ask them which one do you like the number? And they're kind enough to tell me and really. better than me guessing and getting yeah. it wrong. That's right, that's right. I've seen that happen a lot of times. Yeah. So thank you for those tips. Now it in in line of you know, maybe sometimes you don't have that um, harmony, right? Mm-hmm. In a relationship. Of course, needless to say meron bigaya like forgiveness and all that mm, yeah. how do you think forgiveness strengthens the bond between a mother and a child oh gosh well not just mother and child but any relationship yes, right that's true it, the, the thing with the, the thing with relationships is you're dealing with people and when you deal with people it is always always messy and anyone that you interact with regardless of how perfect or amazing they are they will let you know okay because we're all imperfect you know we try our best do our best but we, we all make mistakes so it's really important that we forgive and what i found is that it's helpful when we preemptively forgive um this sort of in a way you anticipate that this person might disappoint you mm-hmm. but decide beforehand that you will not tie the person's identity to a protection you have to make the distinction there. When someone does something that hurts you, it's not because it's their identity. It's not because, for example, I do something hateful towards you. It's not because I'm a person who is hateful, but it was just the action that was hateful. It's easier to forgive the action than the person, but if you think that is identity the person. So you just have to kind of bear in mind the kind of person you're dealing with. Um, believe the best about them. And when they make mistakes, and they will, just remember that People often hurt us not because they are mean or evil, but because they're weak. So think of that um, that offense as, as a manifestation of your weakness. Just decide to forgive because your life is not short. So which one do you believe most? Um, they say that it's very difficult for a child, sorry, a mother to... Um, Tagalog na lang, no? Ang cliche. Oo. Hindi daw matitiis ng magulang. Pero ang anak, kayang tiisip ng magulang. Do you believe in it? It's possible. Um, I, I think really it depends on the, the people in the world. Because, you know, some people have higher pride than others. And that's what they're doing. Um, so, um, it's possible. But have you seen mothers who... Um, you know, very, very much in their pride, and they don't want to apologize because oh, di ba yung level of authority, di ba? Na yeah. ano mo kata kung magsusot? Yes, yes, certainly. Because I think there's a generation of parents that um, we're taught that it is not good to apologize because mm. it will convey weakness, right? And therefore, it, you, you end up um, um, 
compromising it on your own reputation with the child. Um, I don't come from that generation. I'm always apologizing. I hope I don't come from that generation. <laughs> no, do either. But but what I find kasi is when we apologize to our children, we're not just communicating that we did something wrong, which we did anyway, so you know, might as well right, admit right. it for you to surface. Um, but you're saying that this person, this child, is valuable enough that we want to honor them and acknowledge that they deserve that the treatment than they do. Than they were seen. Uh, I was just watching a TED talk on restoration because uh, people always offend that and they need to forgive. But in order to fix the relationship, there's the apology. But you also have to make sure to restore the relationship, to fix the damage that was done. And there's a there's a three step like script that was offered, and, and basically the outline is first you acknowledge the wrong that you did, and then you acknowledge your part in it. Iba yun eh. Right. It's wrong to say na, kunyari, uh, sumigaw ako. But then, that could be seen as you yelled because the person deserved it. Diba? But if you say, you know, I shouted and it was because my, you know, I was not in a good place mentally, I should have regulated right. my emotions. That's you taking ownership of your actions. And then, the third is, you guarantee that you are working on it. So it's kind of like a promise for future action so that the thing doesn't happen again. Or at least, it will allow the other person to correct you if, if you do end up going down the road. So at least they feel that, you know, it's not a forever thing. Right. And then, for the future. And that's right, you know, while, while some mothers or parents in general feel that they have authority over children, um, this is also a way for us to really teach them you know, that forgiveness is important, it's essential for living a peaceful life. And, uh, but still, if, if that is not enough reason, then uh, let, me, let me just quickly cite a medical explanation. You know? um, did you know that nasa chan nyo pala ang mga babies? They were actually saving you already. Oh! Yeah, so before you tell your child na utang mo ang buhay mo sa akin, hindi rin. No? Because there are, when when they're in your womb and you, you get sick, uh, fetuses will, will send fetal cells okay. to whichever organ that is not well to heal. Yes. Wow, okay, this is kind of the opposite of what I was taught. I kind of, I was programmed to think that the child will get what they need regardless of diba? Kung yeah. Lang nang tuwa, no? yeah, yeah. They have actually learned to give you uh, a piece of them. Nasa chan pa lang sila. And that piece actually stays with you for as long as uh, three decades. Wow. Literal, when they say that uh, I have a piece of my child is a part of me. Yeah. Literal po. That there are fetal cells that retain that are retained in your body even after. So yeah. the more kids you have, the more cells you have saving you. That's right. <laughs> right. So but when yeah. you, so but you know when you were sick, when you were when you were pregnant and you got sick, remember your child actually saved you <laughs> one form or another. So hold off on that paninigaw, uh, yeah. panunumbat because for all you know, they saved you more than you ever. Mm, certainly, certainly. All yeah. right. Okay. So, so let's let's go into now uh, your advice. Okay. For for mothers, um, magical generation. <laughs> Would you say? Oh goodness! Yeah, I'm still trying to figure them out. But yes. Magkakaiba yung generation for children. Um, there's a ten year gap between uh, eldest and the. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What advice would you give to mothers out um, there with the children, you know, um, maybe teenagers or toddlers like mm-hmm. mine? I have both. Yeah. Well, I have a third one for those who watched yesterday. <laughs> An imaginary An one. An imaginary one. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Good okay. advice for them. Just same with yesterday, I guess. Um, enjoy whatever life stage they're in. And, uh, you know what, sometimes we think that we're in a position where we're supposed to teach children and give to them, but but oftentimes I find with my kids, I'm the one who learns from them. Um, and usually it's 
the most happy, shocking moment. It's when I least expected that I, I learned from this. For example, uh, recently I was talking to my youngest about some relation. And I was just honestly friendly. I was looking to get many But I always, always make it And she be the, the most, uh, you know, the sharpest observation. And then she told me that the language that I use actually appeared to say when I was being a story. <laughs> It's not easy to hear, okay? I mean, <laughs> I had to remind myself to calm down. And, But I have know. to give it to you for, for raising children who can voice how much. Oh, what I mean. Mm, that's true. That's true. Primarily because of the famous mother father line. Uh, mm, yes, yes. No, but, but that's the thing. Eh. Um, but if you're asking about how to raise kids, you know, it's important to um, build their self esteem. And, and one of the ways to do that is to really let them know that they're kids. Because they want, them, they want to equip their children. Their children are really just. People don't belong to us. They're like uh, they're they're on to us. And so our job is to try our best with all of whatever resources we have available to us. We try our best to equip them so that when they are they venture out into the world, they will have whatever they need in order to survive. And of course, not just survive but thrive. Now, one of the things that we really help them is if they have a good sense, a good vision of their own work. And this is completely different from being proud or not. Okay? In fact, it's good if I'm opposite. Yeah. Someone without being self-esteem actually is the opposite of someone who's proud. Because proud people or people who are free of them, these are people who are insecure. So they're actually have a negative system. But anyway, um, I find that my children's tends to grow when they realize that their feelings matter. That's just like listen to their feelings. This is really what tells us what is right and what is wrong. Um, so, so yeah, um, I learned from my kids. I tried to get the input from them. Well, yesterday when we were doing the call, I desperately needed their help with the tech issues. Um, and then, yeah, it's 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 what we don't expect, or at least when we least expect it. That's when we see the role reversal happen. Right. And they came back the other way around. Yeah, I think that's very, very helpful, Donna. Honor your, your children's children's strength uh, yes. and, and how they can also provide knowledge and wisdom to you, even though you're the one. Yeah. Yes. You're all the That's right. Do we have any questions uh, with the chat box? Moderators? Before we go any further, do we have any questions or maybe comments that you guys are, are, are sharing? Is there a comment there that we would like to uh, read on air? Sabi ng moderator sa phone ko daw na ayaw mag-connect sa Okay. Okay, so if there aren't any, well, um, that's okay. Well, then, thank you. Thank you, Miss Ms. Lisa. I'd like to really um, give my heartfelt thank you for making time uh, and, and, you know, being with us today and sharing your expertise in relationship as well as, you know, your experiences being a mother to four wonderful children. Pleasure to be I wish you more power. So, so I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, talk that we had with Ms. Lisa Benoya. And uh, uh, shortly, we will be announcing, of course, the winners of our 500 pesos Gcash. So I believe there are people who have already tagged their friends. Um, and we will be getting their names shortly. Okay, so, but... In the meantime, anything that you would like to, uh, as parting words to our uh, audience, you know, we have mothers, maybe even fathers mm -hmm. online, uh, and also those who are, you know, maternal figures. Yes, yes. Um, okay, well, I suppose 
I talked earlier about nurturing your kids and building their self-worth. And the thing is, we really cannot give what we don't have. So I guess my encouragement would be for the moms and the dads to be gentle with themselves. Build your own self-worth as well and then realize that that you are a person of value. We're all just, you know, doing our best in this world. You really have to find yourself. Allow yourself to to be that child again and, and try to bring back that sense of awe and wonders. And, and that way, you'll also be able to enjoy life um, the, second, uh, the second time around with the lens of uh, your own children's lives. Yeah. I'm very surprised, you know, that uh, I learned from my children uh, I guess we should all be a, pre- a preacher of learning as well. No, oh, yeah. but it's it's learning from you. Yeah. Not because you know we're older doesn't mean that we know everything, right? So yeah. they can contribute to our growth. And so yeah, that's thank you so much for, for again for your time. My pleasure. All right, so now our tech team will now be flashing the winning comment. Okay, so thank you for uh, staying tuned until the end of the show. And of course, congratulations to our winners. Uh, just give me a second. We have the winners. Yes. One moment. <laughs> the eyes <laughs> are failing. hindi ko magana ang cell phone dahil walang connection. Thank you so much, man. So much. Okay, so the winning comment is from Test Movie Loreno. Okay, so there. Congratulations. We only have one? Yeah? Okay, so congratulations uh, for winning and I believe our engagement team will reach out to you guys or give you a call uh, and uh, give you instructions on how to claim your GCash for 500 pesos. All right. So once again, a heartfelt thank you to each and every one of you who joined us here today. And of course, to our guest speaker, our lovely Binibini Filipinas Philippines uh, universe, rather. Filipini Filipinas universe 1992. This is Lisa Peroya. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. This has been your host, Ching Kizun, and I will see you again next time on Father's Day. Have a good day. Hi, Danny. Hey, how are you? Good. Are you up to answering our questions? Absolutely. Welcome to Amata. Hey, Shell, I'll see you at the pantry later. Okay, bye. So we're here at your Makati PNB office. What's your favorite part in this office? So our PNB building has about five floors, but my favorite, favorite one is basically at the basement because it's next to the gym. By the way, who is Imapta? So Imapta is basically a business global community that helps bridge talent and international brands without having to leave your family and pack up a suitcase. Work abroad without going abroad? How does that work? Yeah, exactly. So basically, for example, I work for a US company, but look, I'm here at PNB Makati office. So definitely, I love the fact that I have this flexibility working from home and anywhere that I'd like. Wow. Hmm. What are the openings that you have? So definitely, we have many openings and any role that you can outsource. Definitely check it out on our careers page. Maybe your dream job is just waiting for you. Oh, okay. What are your working arrangements? Do you offer work from home setup? Yes, absolutely. We have work from home setup or hybrid setup. We have a lot of clients globally, so it's customizable for everyone. Do you accept fresh grads and interns? I absolutely love fresh grads. They just give this fresh perspective. Of course, it depends on the client's role and requirements, but we do have programs that help them before employment. Do you provide laptops or work equipment? I absolutely love my Mapta laptop. Our team will provide you with a desktop or laptop depending on the role requirement. Hey girls! Hi! How are you? 
I'm gonna get some coffee. Do you want some coffee? Maybe later. So, how many offices does Amapta have? So, last I heard, we have about 16 offices throughout the Philippines, in Sri Lanka, Macedonia, and Colombia. That sounds convenient. So, how can I apply here? So definitely you can check out our career site and our social media sites as well in the link down below. Nice. Last question. Why choose Imapta? So definitely choose Imapta because we can provide you with the perfect work-life balance and help you find the long-term career goal and dream job you've always wanted. So why not choose Imapta? Love the answer. Thank you for your time, Danny. Thanks. Have a wonderful time. Let me enjoy my coffee. Bye.